This is Akash Pani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on government's initiatives for the welfare of tribal communities. The participants are K G Suresh, political analyst, and Arjun Chaudhary, anchor. So I'm joined by Professor Dr. K G Suresh, and we will discuss about the developmental projects for the welfare of the tribal population in India. and to give you some background before we start the discussion there are specific provisions in the constitution of india under article 275 for the provision of infrastructure works for tribals for the development and the schemes that are promoted by the central and the state governments the target of course being the northeast of india uh, dr suresh a warm welcome to you on this discussion thank you uh, dr suresh uh, for the benefit of our listeners could you tell us who are the scheduled tribes under the constitution and is a target the northeastern states of the country not just the northeastern states you know northeast certainly is a priority area but there are scheduled tribes all over the country from uh, ladakh to kerala you have scheduled tribes and who have been over the centuries deprived of the development process and uh, therefore special provisions have been made for their benefit their welfare within the constitution and also from time to time governments of the day have been taking proactive steps but certainly it has been a matter of concern that the development has not reached the grassroots level and as a by product you saw certain militant movements taking advantage of the situation and what is now being described as the red corridor the naxalism particularly in the tribal uh, dominated areas there has been an upsurge and the militants or the terrorists have been of the radical ideology have been instigating the tribals against the the mainland the plains people and the governments of the day telling them they are responsible for the plight of the tribal people so particularly we have seen in the last 10 years a lot of efforts are being made to reach out to them so a multi pronged approach has been adopted where the focus is not just on exterminating extremism or terrorism from these areas in terms of law and order not only in terms of uh, building infrastructure and by infrastructure i don't mean just the roads and uh, the buildings and the hospitals but also taking care of the basic necessities of the tribals so that they feel that they are as much taken care of as much uh, they are part of the national mainstream and uh, that includes all aspects of development from potable water to electricity and special attention had to be given and uh, on the occasion of uh, gandhi jayanti yesterday we saw the prime minister himself launching the very ambitious dharti aba janjatiya gram utkarsh abhiyan which was announced only on september 18 the cabinet had uh, given its approval and uh, not even a fortnight has passed the prime minister has already launched and there could not have been a more auspicious occasion than gandhi jayanti because mahatma gandhi the father of the nation believed that india will not progress unless the tribal population develops at a faster pace so i think that this whole scheme in addition to the earlier provision is to fast track the development process that has been going on for quite some time now professor could you tell us about the outlay in the budget for the development of the scheduled tribes here as far as uh, india is concerned could you tell us about the specific pradhan mantri janjati adivasi maha abhiyan which has a budget of yes. 24000 crore rupees 80000 yeah yeah and this pm it is also called pm janman it is about uh, janjati adivasi nyay maha abhiyan that is providing justice to them and justice is in terms of holistic development in terms of uh, for example it was this government uh, let us not forget that uh, decided to celebrate the 15th november or the birthday of bhagwan birsa munda the tribal hero who fought against the british as janjati gaurav divas and the government in terms of not just this but for the first time in the history of the country we have had a 
tribal leader as the president of the country president draupadi murmu so on the one hand very symbolic very powerful symbols including celebration of janjati gorav divas the election of a president from tribal background on the other hand very substantial allocations as you pointed out have been made to take care of education health care water and particularly the whole idea has been to target the extremely backward what you call the ati pichda areas and in terms of anganwadis in terms of uh, routine immunization in terms of uh, mid day meal schemes the whole idea is to and not only that what is interesting is that even mobile is part of mobile connectivity so we are no more just talking about road connectivity building roads up to these areas but also improving communication connectivity so that they remain connected to the district headquarters they remain connected to the state headquarters the whole idea is to ensure that they get faster relief faster solutions to their problems through not just uh, infrastructure road connectivity but also through modern technology like mobile mobile towers are being erected in the most backward districts so this is again taking what is called e governance to the grassroots so there is a very serious attempt at uh, ensuring that there is an even development uh, you know that there is a no no lop sided development to fully the urban areas or the cities but also the backward villages the backward tribal areas which are uh, deep inside the forest it is a big challenging thing but a serious attempt is being made to ensure maximum outreach could you give us your opinion as to the implementation of the honorable prime minister's effort to uplift a tribal especially the development of pvtg the particularly vulnerable tribal groups these are uh, tribal groups who have been uh, deprived denied of development for various reasons including not just political but also social ostracism they have faced over the decades over the centuries and uh, to make them part of the entire development process if you saw yesterday the prime minister inaugurated 40 eklavya schools and uh, laid the foundation of 25 eklavya schools so the whole idea is that these eklavya schools are basically residential schools where the students are imparted with not just the state of the art technology and also with the latest in education but also vocational their skill upliftment skill enhancement is also there vocationalization is also there so that they can take back their knowledge to the society and empower the society with their knowledge so this is part of the larger development agenda where whatever isolation they have been facing so far the whole idea is to bring them at par including the future generation with what is happening in the rest of the country and also to ensure that real empowerment takes place that is the whole idea well speaking of empowerment uh, what is the uh, type and nature of uh, employment that is being generated i understand that horticulture sericulture animal husbandry beehives uh, development of agricultural lands and uh, itis industrial training institutes are being set up so that employment is facilitated what has been the results so far of this effort yes absolutely how to engage them in fruitful vocational activities is something that has been a matter of concern so instead of imposing having a top down approach now what we are adopting is a bottoms up whereas the solution is being looked at in the local area so there is a global outlook but the approaches are local so what is now called the local model where solutions are being looked at in terms and of course this is also being taken care that it is in sync with the sustainable development goals sustainability is there sustainable livelihood organic farming which is in great demand so what are the products that can really actually kind of enhance productivity and enhance their income we are not just looking at mere livelihood but also livelihood which is also sustainable but at the same time it is also remunerative 
now a lot of importance has been given to millets which are hugely grown in these tribal areas so millets are being promoted like anything we celebrated the international year of millets and uh, today you know millets has become not just fashionable but also very healthy so there is a great demand for millets which were hitherto ignored so a lot of emphasis on millets production on livestock on fisheries as you rightly pointed out aquaculture on horticulture now these are areas where they have immense kind of expertise for centuries they have been working on this so that comes very naturally and uh, sports is another area where a lot of these tribal youth are being promoted so there is hardly any area aspect of life which is being neglected so the prime minister's proactive approach and he has already announced that uh, in the coming year when this will be celebrated it will be on a bigger scale and uh, he has said that on 15th november he is looking at uh, implementation personally the prime minister himself is monitoring if you look at the september 18 cabinet uh, note now there is going to be a direct monitoring from the center of all the schemes in an integrated approach is being adopted to ensure that these schemes are implemented and there is no overlapping and all the key ministries have all been identified and they will all be working in tandem with each other to ensure that the delivery mechanism is robust and the tribal people actually benefit and it's a very targeted precise targeted approach rather than kind of a general approach to the entire development process so the mission implementation is now has a convergence of 11 interventions of nine ministries yes. as you just yes. mentioned uh, you yes. have the special yes. central assistance to the tribal sub plan of the ctdp the comprehensive tribal development uh, program there is also the effort to bring them closer to urban settlement uh, could you tell us something about housing and residential infrastructure before we conclude this discussion yes absolutely the most major scheme here is the pradhan mantri awas yojana so the whole idea is to give them pakka houses the prime minister if you remember only on september 15th he had visited jharkhand and uh, one of the major highlights of the visit was to provide pakka houses worth hundreds of crores rupees to the tribal communities so obviously that includes not just a house but it comes with sanitation because of its commitment to swachh bharat i think that this focus is to ensure that in terms of hygiene in terms of health all these provisions are taken care of and then the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana is there which takes care of the rural road structure is there so the prime minister pradhan mantri awas yojana in conjunction with the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana ensures better connectivity of these tribal deep far remote right tribal villages to the towns and uh, as you rightly pointed out to the urban centers well thank you so much uh, professor dr kg suresh uh, for being with us on akashvani and explaining us in simple terms what have been the developmental projects for the welfare of the tribal population and the discussion is not only targeting the tribals in the northeast but all across the uh, country under the theme sabka vikas thank you thank you sir You are listening to a discussion on government's initiatives for the welfare of tribal communities. The participants were K G Suresh, political analyst, and Arjun Chaudhary, anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsttalks@gmail.com or WhatsApp 9780201242.